Today we're going to be finding the roots of polynomials. Uh, we're going to be using the iteration. Um, I'm going to show you two methods. Uh, the method I'm going to use is a substitution method, first of all. And then what I'll do is I'll show you a method using your calculator, where your calculator basically points you in the right direction towards the solution. Before we start on that, can I show you a quick, uh, a quick kind of idea of what I would think uh, iteration is really about? I've just drawn a straight line here. And really what I've been told here is that uh, this straight line, there's a root between 1 and 10. So basically what I'm going to do first of all, really to show that there's a root, I'm going to substitute a 1, okay, into the equation up above. And when I substitute that in, I get a value out. And that value there tells me that that's going to be negative on the graph. I then substitute 10 in to the equation. When I substitute 10 into the equation, I get a positive value coming out of the, uh, the calculation. So what that tells me is if I've got a positive and a negative calculation between two values of x, it tells me that the line will cross the x-axis at some point in between them. Okay, So from negative through to positive, or from positive through to negative. And the root, remember, is just wherever it crosses over the x-axis. Right, so once I've got these two values here, what I'd do is I'd then choose some other values based on some knowledge that I would gain from the size of these values. Using the, the size of these values, this one being smaller would tell me that the root is closer to 1 than it is to 10. Okay, And what I can do is I can just, if I wanted to do a, a basic calculation, I could put in a midpoint roughly of, say I, say I chose 5, and that there would give me a positive value. So then, now I know it's between 1 and 5, the root for this one here. Then if I chose a value of, say, 3, that would give me a negative answer. That would then tell me that 3 is negative, a negative value, and the 5 is a positive, so it must be between 3 and 5. If I then next choose 4, as an x value, that will give me a positive value. So I know it now lies between 3 and 4, because there's the negative and there's the positive. If I then choose a, a mid value, which will help me, that mid value there of being 3.5, that gives me a negative value. So what I know is that this root lies between uh, 3.5 and it lies between 4, because that's negative and that's positive. Both of these numbers round to 4, so if I had to write it to uh, the nearest whole number, I'd say the root would be x is equal to 4, and that would just be to the nearest whole number. Okay, so that, that's roughly what, what I'm going to be doing here. So let's have a look at the question that we're going to be attempting. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to show that the equation x cubed plus 2x minus 2 equals 0 has a, a real root between 0 and 1. And then we'll find the, the, the root basically to, to one decimal place. And then we'll take it a bit further and we'll take it to two decimal places so I can show you how that works there. Okay, so I'm going to do the same as I did in that, uh, that straight line part of the question there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the values of 0 and 1. Now, if this was an x squared term, we would use the quadratic formula that we learned in National 5 or in Intermediate 2 or in Standard Grade. But uh, being an x cubed, we're going to use the iteration method. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by saying fx is equal to, and I'm going to substitute a 0 in to this part here. So what I'll do is I'll put a 0 in plus 2 times 0, minus 2, and that should give me a value of minus 2. I'll then put in a value of 1, and let's just put the value in there as well, okay? Put the 0 in there. And if I put a 1 in, what I'll do is a 1 cubed, plus 2 times 1, minus 2, and that should give me, that'll be 1, that'll be 2, that gives me 3, 3 minus 2 will give me a value of 1, okay? So in there... Since there's a change of sign, a change of sign, a root exists. 
between and that was x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. Okay, so, so that would be a statement that I would need to make just based on that first part. That part there being something we can do uh, without a calculator would certainly be uh, applicable to a question that would come in the objective testing questions within the higher. Okay, so, so let's go on. That's the first part we've done, and we'll go and look at one decimal place now. Okay, so I'm going to bring up the calculator, and what we'll try from there is we'll just set that up. And... What I'll go for is, I'll try, why don't I try, a, I could try a midpoint in between the two of these. Or, what I would be better doing would be to try a point that would be closer to the 1, because that value there is closer to the x-axis than the, this one here, the minus 2. So, what I could do here is, I could choose, well, why don't we just go for 0 0.5, and I'll just show you how this works to set up the calculator. Right then, so, I'm going to start with a bracket. I'm going to put uh, 0 0.5 inside the bracket, I'm going to cube it, and it's going to be plus 2x, so plus 2, times the 0 0.5, and I'm going to subtract 2 from it. So if I get an answer there, what I'm going to tell is that uh, 0 0.5 is going to give me an answer of a negative 0 0.875. Okay, so what I can tell now is that uh, the, the, the break or the, um, the root is going to lie more between these two values. So I can kind of discount this one now. So I'm closer um, between 0 0.5 and 1 because I've got a negative and a positive sign there. So why don't I try something like, let's have a look at these, these values. So I could try something like, uh, why don't we go for 0 0.7? If I go for 0 0.7, I'll just go back in my calculator, delete that, change that to 0 0.7, change this one to 0 0.7, and that should give me an answer of 0 0.257, and it's a negative as well. So, let's see, that's a smaller number than that, so I can discount this one, and I can see that it lies between 0 0.7 and 1. Okay, and that's a lot smaller than this one. Let's try... 0 0.8. I'm just trying to get closer and closer as we go along. Change the calculator, change that to 0 0.8, change this one to 0 0.8 as well, equal sign, and that gives me a positive number. Okay, so, so what I can do is I can discount this one here because that's a smaller number than that one. So I can see now that the root lies between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. Now, to get an answer to one decimal place, I need to take it to two decimal places so that I can round back to one decimal place. If I was to, to try the 0 0.75, then what I can do is, once I get that, I can then tell some, something from the, the result I get from that. Let's put that in first and then we'll look at it. Okay. And again... 0.75, and what that gives me is a minus 0.078125. Okay, so that negative number is smaller than that one, so I can discount that. I can tell here that the root lies between 0.75 and 0.8. Both of these numbers round to 0.8. So, what I can say from here is that, um, since there's a change of sign, Sign exists, um, and what we'll say is that uh, both the 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and the 0 0.75 round to 0 0.8. The solution is x is equal to 0 0.8, and that's just to one decimal place. Okay, and that's all I was asked for in part eight. Part A, sorry. Part A. Okay, so what I'd want to do next is I'd want to take that a bit further. Now I know that uh, the root lies between 0 0.75 and 0 0.8. Now if I'm going to try and do it to two decimal places, what I would then need to do is just take that a wee bit tighter on my calculator for the, the numbers that I'm going to use. So let's try, let's see what the numbers are looking like. So let's try 0 0.77. Let's have a go at that and see what that works out to be. So 0 0.77. Okay. 
just change the numbers in the calculator again. Okay, and what that gives me out is that's going to give me minus 3.467 times 10 to the minus 3, and all that's going to be is minus 0 0.003467. Okay, so give me it in standard form in my calculator. That's a the number there. It is still a negative number, so that number there I can tell it lies between 0 0.77 and 0 0.8, so I can discount this value here. Okay. So next I'll try is, what about trying 0 0.78? So I'm going to see where, where it lies from there. So if I put a 0 0.78 in here, and what I come out with is 0 0.034552. Okay, and let's see, that positive number is smaller than that one, so let's take that one away. So I know it lies between 0 0.77 and 0 0.78. Now, from there, remember, if I'm going to round it to two decimal places, I need to go to three to round it backwards. So let's go, why don't we go midpoint here? We'll go for 0 point, let's see, 775. And we'll see how that one works out there. Okay, so back into the calculator. Take that away, 75, okay. Back to there, 0 0.775 equals, and that gives me a 0 0.015484375, okay? And that number there, let's see, is smaller than that positive number. Take that one away. So I can really see now that uh, the number below that would round to 0 0.77, so that's going to be my solution, really. Let me just try one more, just to, to prove that. Let's go for that there, 0 0.774. Let's just change that out. And from there, what I've got is 0 0.0116848.24. This number here is smaller than that one. I can discount that, and now we can see that it lies between 0 0.77 and 0 0.774. Okay, so what I can then see is, I'll just move this paper up. What I've got is, so, since both 0 0.77 and 0 0.774 round to 0 0.77 um, I'll say the solution is x equals 0 0.77 and that would be that complete Okay, so, so let me try and show you what that, that would be like uh, if, if we just tried to do that in the calculator, just straight out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel, and I'm going to set my calculator up in table mode. And this will be a mode that will point you in the direction that you need to go to try to solve this problem. Let's press the mode button, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, choose the table um, option here. So that's button number three, and what it brings up is a, an f of x fun function and I'll just type in our function here. I'm going to use the alpha characters, so that's the pink characters that are on this calculator. So alpha, x, and I'm going to cube that. And then it's plus two times, and it's going to be two times the x, okay? Just using the alpha again to bring up that pink x that's there, and I'm going to subtract two. So that's me got my formula in. What I'll do first of all is I'll press the equal sign, and remember what the question was asking was uh, to prove that there's a, a root between 0 and 1. So let's start. Instead of starting at 1, we'll start at 0. Press equals. Instead of ending at 5, I'll just end at 1, and I'll press equals. I only want a step of 1. And that will only give me a couple of results. So what I've got here now is I've got uh, a table that's come up, x values and y values. So the... Um, the y values would be the f of x value, and if I plug in 0 into that uh, equation, I get minus 2 out. And that's the exact same as what I did here to work that one out. I plugged the value of 1 in for x, and I got 1 out. So that's this calculation here. So because I can see a change of sign, I could write these values down and mention the change of sign and say that the root exists.
Now if I want to investigate that further, I'm going to press the AC button and just cancel out of here just now. Brings me back to the formula again, or back to the, back to the equation, the f of x equation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it a bit deeper. And what I'll do is I'll uh, press the equals button. I'm going to start at, let's start at uh, zero again. Press equals. I'll finish at one. Press equals. And the step I want is just a tenth of that. So I'll go for 0 0.1. And that should give me 10 steps. So what I can do with this here, I can see that there's my 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 in the x direction. And then the, the, the kind of corresponding values for y or f of x. If I just tab down a bit, so there's 0 0.2. And I'm looking at the change of sign. There's a sign, a negative sign in there. And if I just go to here, there we go. There's a change of sign there. So that value there is 0 0.7. So that should correspond with the 0 0.7 value that I worked out here before. And there's a 0 0.8 there, which is 0 0.112. Okay. So I've got these values here. And all, all I have to do is make sure that the values I'm getting here are written down in this kind of form to make sure that you're answering the question and showing what you're actually doing on your calculator. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I know that the, the root exists between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. So I'm going to cancel an equal sign and then I'm going to go for 0 0.7 equals and I'll go for 0 0.8 and equals. So I want to go a step further than that, further than the 0 0.1. So I'll go for 0 0.01 and that should give me 10 steps again. And again I'm looking for a negative sign changing to a positive. And what I have here is the values of x that I may have chosen. So one that I had chosen was uh, 0 0.77. So there's 0 0.77 here. And that gives me the answer of minus 3.467 times 10 to the minus 3, which is that one there. Okay, so that's the same value. Looking down at 0 0.78 gives me this value here from the, the display. So without doing the calculations, I can see very clearly where the change from positive to negative is, or negative to positive, is between 0 0.77 and 0 0.78. Right, let's, let's press the cancel button again, and let's go for 0. Point, we'll go for equals, and instead of 0 0.7, it'll be 0 0.77 equals, and 0 0.78 equals, and I want a step a bit more than that. So it'll be 0 0.001. That should give me 10 steps in between there. Again, if I tab down, or I don't really need to tab down, there's 0 0.77, which is this one here we worked out. And what I've got is 0 0.771. So that's a positive value there. If I just go over to it, you can see the positive value appearing here. So I know that the, the root exists and it lies between 0 0.77 and 0 0.771. So both of them would round to 0 0.77. And that would give me the same answer as I got at the bottom of the, the question here. Okay, so you can use that table method, but you must show how you got your calculations. So just showing like this here would be fine and making your statements. Okay, an easy way to do it. But um, it's relatively easy going through the calculation in that method as well. There are other methods, but these are the only two that I'm going to show you today. And uh, hopefully that, should, that helps you. Uh, Ken Maths.